This week on Miked Up, Michael Voris will be joined by former presidential candidate and devout Catholic Dr. Alan Keyes. They will be discussing the revolution that is brewing in the United States, the push for the impeachment and removal of President Barack Obama, and what all this means for the Christian faithful. All that and more coming up this week on Miked Up. We go live with Dr. Alan Keyes on Wednesday, October 30th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Please click the link for more details. Join Michael Voris in the Netherlands as he unravels the breakdown and restoration of Christian civilization. This event will take place in Nijmegen on November 15th and 16th. For more information, click on the link provided. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. There's one glaring difference among believing Catholics today, which constitutes the big divide on the right among Catholics who consider themselves to be Orthodox. And that difference is this, how much emphasis they place on the doctrine of hell, on their approach to hell. Some downplay it and act as though something substantial has changed in what the church has always taught. And these folks are what largely constitute the Church of Nice. Others accept and hold to how the church has always approached its teaching on hell, and these folks are who largely constitute the more orthodox or traditional-minded crowd. This could easily be described as one hell of a difference, and nearly every attitude and approach of priests and laity today derives from this central issue. How do you view hell and the question of how many are saved or damned? If you fall into the hell not so much crowd, you are probably not very motivated to evangelize heavily. Really, why would you be? After all, if your sense or your gut is that no one, practically no one, goes to hell, that the biggest majority of souls are saved in the end, then what would be your great urgency to preach about the truth of Catholicism and the need to become Catholic? However, if you believe that most people are damned and hell is going to the everlasting abode for most humans, then you tend to see things quite differently from the Church of Nice gang. If, unlike the Church of Nice gang, you think that there's a very good chance most are going to be damned, then you evangelize with a gusto, with an eye to the ultimate end. If you are in the Church of Nice, however, you tend to see people converting to the faith as, well, nice, but not really necessary in any meaningful sense of terms of eternity. That single difference in views on the afterlife is the single biggest issue in the church these days. Active homosexuality, eh, regrettable, but not that big a deal, one side says. Unrepented, and you go to hell, the other side says. Cohabitation, again, not really awful, however much it should be avoided, says the Church of Nice. Unrepented, and you go to hell, the other side says. And so it goes on every single issue down the proverbial list. Abortion, contraception, adultery, divorce and remarriage, missing mass on Sundays and holy days, etc. It's not that the Church of Nice gang out and out denies hell. No, that's not the issue. It's just that it's so downplayed and excused away and rationalized away in light of chatter about the mercy of God that it might as well be denied. The average Catholic today lives his or her life as though there is no real substantial possibility that they would be damned. And their belief feeds their choices, and their choices feed their belief in one terrific downward spiral, which eventually causes a massive diminution of the faith. With all the talk of the mercy of God versus the doctrine of hell, one thing gets pointed up frequently. It's the idea that the God of the Old Testament was mean and angry, thunderbolts and lightning, and the God of the New Testament is sweet and kind and hugs puppies. So the implication is that hell is an idea relegated to the old, and God's mercy is the focus of the new. That would be a very interesting argument if there was one shred of truth to it, but there isn't. The Old Testament, catch this now, the Old Testament has no real doctrine of hell present anywhere in it in any kind of substantial form the way we understand it now. Back in the Old Testament, it's kind of a murky and vague concept. 
present, to be certain, but nothing with the clarity we have today. It is only in the pages of the New Testament that the doctrine on hell begins to emerge very clearly and starkly. And not only does it appear in a generic form or from a generic source, it is in fact from the lips of our blessed Lord Himself that the doctrine takes its most explicit and concrete form. He talks about the unquenchable fire, the suffering, the desolation, the abandonment, the hunger, the thirst, the pains, the being handed over to torturers. Jesus himself is the one who emphasized hell over and over and over again. If almost no one goes there, and there's not really that great a chance of going there, well then what was he talking about it so frequently for? It's curious how the Church of Nice crowd will be so quick to pull out a passage here and there about mercy, which of course there are there and there are many of them, but almost totally ignore the gigantic number of passages and references about hell from the Son of God Himself. The Church of Nice is simply off their rockers and out of balance on this score. And the Church of Nice had better get this straight or there will be hell to pay. And for the record, they can take up their beef with the Son of God, not traditional-minded Catholics. God love you. I'm Michael Voris. Hello, I'm Emilia. I come from Netherlands and from the province of Gelderland. Hi, I'm Emilia Bos. I'm her sister. We're both from Holland and we're big fans of churchmilitant.tv. And really, you should be too, so sign up today!